Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're heading to the Lego store. We're also going to open up some mail. I've got some mystery packages here. Not sure what's in those. And I'm also going to be making a change to the studio. So pretty exciting. First thing I have to do is do some shopping. So i got to go to Home Depot. i got to go to the vet. I've got to go to my P.O. box to see if there's any more mystery mail. And then also we've got to go to the Lego store because uh, the um, pad wall is going to be restocked today, I think. I hope. I have to go out anyway, so I may as well check out the Lego store, right? I always like checking out the pad wall because then I always get like these random pieces and I get drawers full of them and then later on in life it's like, oh yeah, I remember I have all of these pieces and now I have enough awesome pieces to create a train station or uh, a raised platform hill <laughs> or to cover something in slopes and it's pretty awesome. You know what, I just finished building that train station uh, yesterday. And now this morning, first thing I did was clean up my disastrous mess. I had like another table set up. I had parts everywhere. I had silly heads full of parts everywhere. Whew, it was uh, quite the sort this morning. But yeah, I'm excited to head out to the Lego store. So let's do that. You know, it's a great day when you're at the Home Depot. It's not at all what I'm here for, but I could check out maybe some new lighting solutions for underneath the shelves. So it lights up the Lego City. Look at this, hub space. Control your home with one simple app. Lots of people gave me lots of suggestions in the last video when I talked about lighting. I haven't really dug into it any further, have I? Look at this though, it's all uh, controlled with the app, eh? That's what I need. I don't want to be plugging these things in every time I want to use them. It'd be cool if I could just, you know, log onto my phone and flick a button or press a button and they all turn on at once. Oops, that's sticky. Ah. But what I'm truly here for is just a couple uh, shelf brackets. I just need a couple more of these for my track shelving because we're going to be adding a new mini shelf in the Lego room. Do I treat myself to a nice Rubbermaid shelf with the nice smooth edges, three foot shelf? Or do I just custom cut one with the wood that I have in the garage? Would it be worth the $16.47 not having to run the uh, skill saw and have that smooth edge? Maybe. But I'm, I'm too cheap for that. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. We're going to leave that there. So I just got to the mall, and let's just say that I came prepared for a big pab haul. Oh, man. Check it out. They just loaded it up. We got some white plate, dark gray plate, palm leaves, these huge arches, which actually are the arches that support uh, my, my raised train line, right, on the uh, uh, raised platform walls there. Also, some of the large tan bricks and then... Uh, some of the panels. I haven't gotten any of these yet. I got a bunch of them in white. They're great for like structure. Maybe I should get some of those. Also, these plates are nice. Oh, azure slopes up here. Flowers, green ones. And then, oh, one by six black plate. That's good. Also two by four bricks. Oh, I actually picked up a lot of these like years ago. I used to use them as grass in my city. They're still a little bit too vibrant. The lime green. Oh, ah, I'm going to get some of those. Cheese slopes and green. That's solid for our hills. I need more of those. Those are one by one. I found one by two on the pad wall before, but never one by one. So that's awesome. One by eight uh, tiles. Look at this. Green plate. Uh, that's two by ten. And also these bricks. I used a whack of these when I was building those uh, platform coverings and also the train station. And those are the parts that are just coming in so handy. Same with the staircases for those hills. And then uh, glass panels. I still have a bunch of those that I haven't used yet, but those are always nice when you find them on the pad wall. Got some white two by two brick up here and a whack of stuff. There's actually some boxes behind me as well. And those boxes have eight by eight LBG plate. Some more of those glass panels and also four by four green plate, which is awesome. Two by two, uh, light gray that's always good and then some large red plates as well so I gotta get me the green stuff right I got the uh, tower of green 4x4 plate in the center and then I'm putting the cheese slopes around the exterior I also just spotted these up here it's the transparent 2x2 two two slopes I could use these to upgrade my waves in my ocean just make them larger waves that might be a good find right there like make large waves that's pretty sweet so it looks like they still have the flower pot promo when you spend $200 or more. And when you spend 50 bucks on Lego Star Wars, you get this little X-Wing poly bag. So it's nice that they still have one of the Star Wars promos. 
Looks like they have a new set on the shelf. It's the Tales of the Space Age Lego Ideas set with 688 pieces. They also have the Star Wars Brickhead 4-pack. ATTEs, clone tanks, UCS Razor Crest, gunship, and also the UCS X-Wing. You guys see that the new Ninjago set is coming out? Ninjago City Markets, they still have gardens in stock here with 5,685 pieces, retailing for 450 Canadian dollars. So they got the Disney figures here, and I need some of these as well. So I'm also feeling up a bunch of Disney figures on top of my nine pap cups. I'd say I did a pretty good job of loading up this bag, didn't I? Holy cow, I had to go drop it off at my car because I've got one other stop I need to make at the mall. I sat on my bloody sunglasses, so I'm gonna see if they can repair them here at the mall. No! So long story short, I'm grumpy because my sunglasses are beyond repair and there's nothing they can do about it. So I've just gotta craggle them. But you know what? This hamburger soup looks delicious and it's going to serve as my breakfast and lunch. All right, now that I'm back from the Lego store, it's time to sort all of these pieces from the nine pap cups. Whew, some good ones there, that's for sure. And also, we'll find out what minifigures I got in these five mystery bags. So yeah, I hope there's no duplicates. Got some of the Disney ones already. I'm trying to complete the collection. I did a little bit of bag feeling and I'm pretty sure these are ones that we need. And this is officially the easiest sorting in the planet because there are only four different part types. How did I leave so many different parts behind on the fab wall? I don't know. Maybe I should have got a little bit more variety because there were some pretty sweet pieces there. So I guess the big question is, is did I get carried away? And the answer is no, I, I don't think I did. But like one of these bags is like crazy. And that bag is the bag of one by one green cheese slopes. Oh my gosh, like that is a freezer bag loaded full of them. But these are gonna come in super handy when it comes to adding details to the green spaces in the Lego city. I wanna add some green spaces. In fact, I think that's gonna be one of my next projects is dolling up a really like visible spot in the Lego city that's looked like uh, garbage for quite some time. I was trying to think of a great word for it and, and garbage is the word I came up with. But yeah, I'm going to use these cheese slopes to uh, create the hills, right? On the raised platforms there. I've got a lot of texturing I need to do and also the green spaces. Now the, the green space that I was referring to that's looked like garbage for way too long is this one right here. So around this pillar, by this train track and also by the construction site. I recently robbed tile from there to uh, do the tiling for the raised train station or for the, uh, sorry, the train station that's integrated into the raised platform there. But yeah, this whole area and also underneath here needs to become textured and full of trees. So that's gonna be one of my uh, green space landscaping projects that's gonna happen in the very near future. The other plastic bag that you see there is actually uh, those two by two transparent slopes. And I'm thinking I can create some pretty cool waves using those, some larger waves. I'm just using the cheese slopes right now, but I think a combination of cheese slopes and those large two by two slopes will come in real uh, handy when it comes to creating big detailed waves for the ocean. And then just more plate, pretty typical stuff. Eight by eight, I used a whole bunch of that when I was creating that train station, actually both train stations. So this stuff comes in super handy when it comes to mills plating and creating floors for structures. And then green plate, you know where I use all the green plate. You never have enough of this stuff because Eventually, I know I keep saying it, but eventually I'm going to be mill splitting, well not mill splitting, but I'll be uh, developing the entire amusement park. And you can see I actually robbed some 16 by 16 plates from the amusement park recently. But yeah, when I do that, I'm going to want to add green space. And the easiest way to do that is to be is to convert some of the uh, light gray plate uh, into the green plate. So I'm happy to have a bunch of that as well. Now I found green cheese slopes on the pad wall before, but it was the one by twos and I was running really low on those. I just put these in here, but I'm really happy to have the one by ones. All right, it's time to check out some minifigs. Well, that was a success. I got five different minifigures, all of which we needed. We got the evil queen, the queen of hearts, King John, Oswald, and also Stitch with his forearms. So now I got five more minifigures out of the collection. Only need two more. McGule from Coco, which I still haven't seen. I know, I've got to make it my mission to watch that movie. And also Jiminy Cricket. And then I have the complete collection.
Remember at the beginning of this video when I mentioned we were going to unbox some packages? I don't think I can do that anymore simply because there's just too much fan mail here. There's like letters and boxes, all of which are a mystery. But I think I need to dedicate a specific video to opening all of this stuff just so the people that sent it know to watch that specific video. Whereas if I bury it into a Lego store video, the people that sent this might not see me read their letters. So I'm going to do that in a separate video. Sorry to get your hopes up, but this is all mystery fan mail and I've got to dedicate a mystery fan mail video to all of this stuff. So I will no longer be opening all of this stuff in this video, but make sure you stay tuned. And wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Like that is incredible. I can't wait to see what's in there. Well, everybody, it looks like uh, we're on our way to Home Depot. That's right. I've got to go back to Home Depot. I was talking about making some changes to my studio and I still want to do that. And I came home here and sorted all those parts and I sat down and started to think about these changes. And I was like, wow, in order to do it perfectly, I need one more shelf bracket. And it turns out the never ending wood supply in my garage is, is finally out of 12 inch shelving. I didn't even bother to check because honestly, I had so much of it. Like from my garage alone, we've added all those shelves, the shelves on top of the parts, all these shelves there, the shelf on the back there, and all the shelves over there as well. All from the wood in my garage. I didn't even have to buy any shelving to do that. Because I had it just from like the old Lego room and old shelving loads that I had. And it, I just always had enough. And I just figured I wouldn't even check before I leave. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad I didn't buy that little shelf at the uh, Home Depot there because that was a two foot shelf. But it turns out I actually need a shelf that's not 48 inches which would be four feet i need one that's 49 inches so i've got to go to home depot i've got to get a new shelf and another shelf bracket so yeah just trying to make my workspace here a little bit more uh functional uh right now i've got two tables but i find myself constantly setting up a third table because when you're building custom things you need places to put your parts and you don't really want to put them on the ground so yeah i just want to make this place a little bit better than it already is Look at this place though, it's ridiculous. Like, I could build an entire Lego city with how much 5 8 Malamine I have here. I could top a whole new surface, it's crazy. But none of this is like the 12 inch shelving. So yeah, gotta go get some more supplies. Off I go to the depot. Got back from Home Depot, cut that shelf down to 49 inches, installed that third bracket, boom, set up a shelf for my laptop. And the neat thing about that shelf is, it gets the laptop off of this table. Now I can use this table for building Lego, which is way better in my opinion. And also the laptop when I'm sitting in my chair like this is at perfect eye level. So it's actually ideal. There's a bit of cord management that I have to do there, but it's way better to have that laptop up off my building table. Yeah, the next thing I have to deal with is uh, these drawer units right here. Not a huge fan of those drawer units and the way that that tabletop is just sort of floating on top of them. Got the foreman down here, making sure the job's done correctly. Check it out, everybody. Benjamin's learning how to stand right now. You got it, buddy? You getting it, Benjamin? Yeah? Are you standing for the first time? Yeah? He's got his walker. <laughs> Whoa! Look at your hair. It's crazy. Goodness. He's so proud of himself. He's so proud of himself. Look at him. So you know me. I'm always changing up the Lego room, whether it be the Lego City or my workstation. And it's important to have an organized workstation when you're building custom Lego and when you're building Lego at all. Or in life in general, it's good to be organized. And I think the changes today were hugely positive. So now both of my build tables are actually on the Ikea wheel legs, so they can be wheeled around, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. When it was on those cabinets, obviously that desk there that I had my laptop on it couldn't be wheeled around. Now there are some part bins that have already consumed that tabletop there. Uh, we got the beach stuff. When I got to populate the beach, that'll be gone. And then this is my boutique hotel stuff, so when I work on my boutique hotel, eventually that'll all be sorted and put away and same with the uh, plates that we picked up today. It's nice having my laptop up off the uh, desk there and it's at eye level. And then I also have my wireless keyboard and mouse, right? It's not like I'm gonna be typing up here. That's not ergonomical. But yeah, good thing they make wireless keyboards and mouses, right? So that's good. And then the uh, white drawer units that used to be under there. I've been talking about this for a while. I just put them underneath here for now. 
Now I was mentioning that they don't fit under there, <laughs> but they do fit. The thing is, is they have to be behind the legs because it was a quarter inch off fitting from side to side. So if I wanted to fit it in between the legs, so they're flush with the legs, similar to this one over there, then I would have to notch this leg a quarter inch or just replace it with a two by six. And I could very easily do that. I actually already cut the wood right here. This is a two by six that's cut to the same length as those large four by four posts. And I could replace one of the legs, probably the one on the uh, right there with that two by six, and then I could slide these forward. But I actually really don't mind the look of it uh, like this here. I really don't mind the fact that they are inset a little bit there. I need to go through these drawers. I'm sure you've seen them before. This is like where those cheese slopes will end up. These are all just like reserve overflow parts. What I need to do is go through here, pull them all out, group them all together, and then label on the drawers what is in each drawer. Whether it be, <laughs> this one specifically says bags, this one is base plates, those are the only two that are correct. But if I just put plates, tiles, bricks, just generic stuff that, uh, so you know what's in there. Or what I could do is mark it on a spreadsheet, put numbers on the drawers, and then update the overstock drawers based on that spreadsheet. So I could do drawer number one, two, three, four, five, and then have them on the spreadsheet and then just mark down what's in each drawer and then reference uh, it that way. And then every time I take something out of the drawer, update the spreadsheet, I could see me forgetting to do that or not keeping on top of that. So I'd almost rather just do like generic and then sort of memorize what's in there because I have a really good mental memory of where all of my parts are. Like I can come over here and be like, yeah, one by two plates. Oh, it's good. Okay. Oh, white tile. Like I'm really good at memorizing where everything is like light gray brick down here or two by two brick right down here. Oh, if you want to find two by six, it's down here. Like I can memorize where they are because this is what I do every day, right? I know my arches are here and my gray slopes have their own drawer or whatever it may be. So that's why I don't label these ones and put the pieces on the exterior of the drawers because I have a really good mental memory of where everything is. <laughs> so it's pretty convenient. And I would imagine if uh, I empty this, label it as plates, label it as tiles, label it as bricks, I'll sort of memorize what colors and what sizes are in there because I'm in there all the time. And another positive thing is I no longer have to worry about moving this table. It is on wheels, it's easy to move, but every time I wanted to access those drawers, moving that table became sort of annoying. Also, I couldn't sit at this desk and have my legs underneath it, right? I couldn't put my legs under there because it was solid front with the drawers. So now that they're over here, it's just way better. I don't think it takes away from the appearance at all. Just have to make sure I remember to keep the drawers closed at all times, but I don't think it takes away from the appearance of the Lego city. I know recently I removed all those under table scenes because it just became like too much, but I think the solid white drawers are actually quite attractive. And if I really wanted to, I could put more of them along the entire thing. I could even put cabinets under there, like kitchen cabinets with the, you know what I mean? Cabinets that open up and have the shelves in them. And then I could put stuff like this. Oh, my beach minifigures aren't sorted and ready to go yet. Well, I can put them temporarily in there in a cabinet. And then it would look pretty nice because of course, it's just like the white polished look. So yeah, there we go, a Lego room update and also uh, some Lego store shopping. Pretty successful day, pretty happy with it so far and I'm excited to continue. Thank you so much for coming on by. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Remember to like, subscribe and stay tuned for some more great stuff. Farewell.